All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Fred Dixon. I'm the product manager for Big Blue Button. Let's share my webcam here. It's an open source web conferencing system for online learning. So I'm going to give you an update from after our developer summit, which is wrapping up. So just I'll have a few slides at the beginning so that folks who may not be familiar with Big Blue Button watching this can get an overview of it. It's an open source web conferencing system. We originated at Carleton University in 2007. It's had over eight years of really intense development, localized into many languages. I'll talk about some of the design wins. Probably the biggest we have is the US Department of Defense built an internal system around Big Blue Button where they publicly state they save at least $12 million a year. So that's the power of open source. Lots of companies involved with it, but lots of good examples where people are building and saving money with Big Blue Button and getting collaboration done. So in terms of the collaboration capabilities, we're using Big Blue Button here for the presentation. It's real-time sharing of audio, video, slides, chat, desktop, polling, emoticons, uh, screen sharing, breakout rooms, and closed captioning, and support accessibility with JAWS as well. Accessibility is super important to us, especially for the online learning market. It's kind of three use cases that we focus on with Big Blue Button. The one-to-one, -one, which is tutoring, or uh, virtual office hours, uh, maybe coaching, and the small group collaboration, students getting together to collaborate, the instructor getting together and uh, collaborating with the students, probably in the small groups, breakout rooms is another example. And the traditional one-to-many, where the instructor has some material they want to cover with a group of students, engage them, making sure that they're uh, interacting with the material and the instructor to further the learning as well. And you can kind of say there's three areas for learning. There's the higher ed learning, K-12, and corporate. All the use cases are similar. Some things about the product. So uh, it's localized, uh, quite a few languages. The localization is at TransFX, and other people can contribute to the localization. Again, one of the capabilities of having or the advantages of having a large community. Uh, lots of use, lots of work going on to support WebRTC. We currently support WebRTC audio in Firefox and Chrome. And Edge is getting there for WebRTC audio as well. So I said earlier, accessibility is super important. Every release, we get a, an external company to audit the accessibility for the Big Blue Button release, take their feedback in, incorporate them, and it comes up at, out at the end with a statement on the accessibility support, which is available at our website. Just some screenshots from it. You can see here four webcams being shared, different layouts. Here's four webcams again, it's a slightly different layout. And if you want to share lots of webcams, you can. Here's an example of sharing 15 webcams. So you can do very visual, but a lot of the content for Big Blue Button or a lot of the use cases is focused on uh, collaboration, engagement of students, engagement of the audience. And that's, that's content as well as polling, quizzing, emoticons, chat sharing desktop, but the video is a pretty good, pretty, pretty key component too. The project is doing quite well in terms of uh, just increasing the amount of development activity. I have a couple of screenshots or a couple of a picture of our developer summit. You can see that happening. So we now have uh, over 3,300 forks on Big Blue Button. There's a developer community of over 2,300 developers in the mailing list and lots of activity on GitHub over the last couple of years. And that's just going to continue to grow as more and more developers become involved in the project. There are seven committers. And the way we develop, the way we build Big Blue Button is perhaps unlike other open source projects where it's just, hey, it's an open repo, anybody can commit. We go through a development process. There are a group of core committers that are responsible for ensuring any check-ins uh, are of high quality. And then we go through a long testing process as well. And the goal there is that we, uh, under promise and over deliver. People may not realize, I mean, open source, uh, same challenges as commercial products, but the advantage of open source is you can get lots of people using it, lots of people getting feedback on it, and lots of people can contribute. So this particular release, the 1.0 release, uh, sorry, the 1.1 release has seen a lot of testing, which has made it very stable with the community. Some fun pictures from our past developer summits uh, in Brazil. Uh, hosted by the MCOF team in Ottawa. Uh, we had host BBB join us as well. Um, and this year, we are at Seneca College. So at the York campus, and here we are doing this. This is actually taken probably a few hours ago. 
where we were doing a sync up with the developers remotely who weren't able to make it to the summit and also with those locally as well. So I think there was over 25 developers working uh, around Big Blue Button during the summit. And again, the developer summit for it is a chance for us to come together every six months, collaborate and coordinate. And then that's how a lot of the development gets planned out for the coming six months. And that all goes through the, the committers and the attention to quality, accessibility, the documentation, everything else that makes a product release really solid. So just in terms of the project, like how we kind of govern ourselves and where we focus our efforts, you know, we don't try to do everything for everybody. That's pretty hard. But we focus on the teaching and learning aspects for collaboration. And uh, part of our mantra is a release on quality, not dates. We are open source, so other people in the world can build on us. And we try to under-promise and over-deliver. And that those pillars, I think, play out very well. Because obviously, if you do the really good collaboration for teaching and learning, you can use the same product in other areas, as the US government did uh, in the Department of Defense, and as many other people have been doing around the world. And then just, again, how we measure success. You know, do users want to use Big Blue Button? Does an instructor want to use Big Blue Button because it does a better job of enabling them to engage remote students, the design wins, and also the growth of the Big Blue Button ecosystem as well. So all things are looking strong. And I think with the working that we're doing on the HTML5 client, some other aspects of features which we'll talk about, you're going to see even more growth. So there's there's a lot of a lot of work going on under the hood. I kind of shine a light a little bit onto it with the committers, our process. Uh, but all at the end of the day is to make sure that experience with online learning is really good. We updated our website recently, so you may have not seen it, uh, or you may have seen it. Check it out. So some updates to the content. You're going to see a lot more blog posts where we're going to highlight the success stories that Big Blue Button has been having over the past. Here's an example of it being used uh, at uh, schools in uh, Myanmar, and that is Moodle plus Big Blue Button to get uh, the ability for remote students to have a really good learning experience. So it's up there in a blog. You can go to the Big Blue Button website and see it. But you can see here an instructor teaching remote students. And this is, this is a great example of the open source. Like They didn't pay anybody. They've been using Big Blue Button. And it's enabling to bridge the gap uh, across the distance. And it, I got to say, from the product management hat is on. I mean, it's, we're all entrepreneurs. We want to build businesses around it. But it's really good to see the social benefit and the positive impact that our project has in other communities. So as I said earlier, we focus on one market, online learning. There is a lot of adoption that has gone on Big Blue Button over the last couple of years. In terms of the learning management systems, this is what you'll see at K-12 or at universities. We have a very deep integration with Moodle. Uh, other systems, other companies, commercial companies, have built Big Blue Button in, so it's available to their customers out of the box. Canvas has built Big Blue Button in. Schoology has built Big Blue Button in. Genzibar has built it in. And D2L has built it in as well. It means these cu their customers have very easy access to uh, very well integrated collaboration inside their learning management system. The uh, Moodle, we do a very deep integration with Moodle. Sakai is a very deep integration. And for any other learning management system out there that maybe doesn't have a native integration, there's the uh, LTI support, which we do. Uh, so you can embed Big Blue Button in your LMS as a learning tools interoperability or as an external tool through LTI, you know, learning tools interoperability. And this is the focus on the market. And that focus has yielded a lot of deep integration. Uh, we're also embedded in Moodle Cloud as well. So if anybody wants to try a Big Blue Button, they can go set up a free account on Moodle Cloud. They get Moodle free for 50 users, and Big Blue Button is there as well. And in terms of the Moodle the plugins, there's about 1,200 plugins at Moodle.org. And I think we're, actually, I think this slide is a little old. I think we're ranked around number uh, five uh, in terms of overall downloads, which is awesome. I think there's over like 4,500 Moodle sites that are running the Big Blue Button integration. We would really try to support our community as well through our developer mailing list. Uh, lots of people ask questions. We take those seriously. We answer them, put the answers back in the documentation. And over time, a lot of work has gone into making sure the installation of Big Blue Button is as smooth as possible. Uh, oh, yeah, there was a quote. Uh, I shared this in the earlier slides, but uh, this is another uh, uh, Mark Matthews. Uh, so just talking about uh, how Big Blue Button is very smooth in terms of the very low effort in terms of support. And from the product management side of the point of view, that's what I value is 
We don't need to have all the features to provide a really good solution, but what we do provide has to work really well so that the instructors and the students have a good experience and they want to use Big Blue Button again. And the schools that deploy it don't see a big increase in the support. So that's the, that's the kind of foundation center development where a lot of work goes into the core to make sure the core is really solid. And then on that core, we build the features, but it's not a race for features. It's a realization that, you know, the core comes first. So I want to go through some of the highlights quickly of what is in the current release and talk about the next. So the current release uh, has polling. I'm going to go through, I think I've covered this in the past, so you can uh, share polls with other people. You have the mode icons. We have breakout rooms now, so the instructor can actually do uh, take the groups of students, put them to breakout rooms for a period of time, monitor them, uh, have the students come back, share what they've done. This is really key, and it was a really, it was a really lot of a big chunk of effort to get it in. But we wanted to make sure that the instructor could have the students uh, collaborate with each other, which is an important part of learning. So if the instructor puts a student to breakout room, they'll get a message come up says, would you like to go into breakout room? You click yes. Um, there'll be a time limit in the breakout rooms so the students know how long they have. The instructors can actually monitor the breakout rooms as well. So I'm just gonna zoom in. This was, this was the ability that we wanted to do is give the instructor visibility in terms of how many rooms they created, who was in the rooms, and you can move the mouse over and get a list of all the people in it. The ability to listen to the room, so that's just changing the B-leg of the audio conference. So the instructor is in the main room, students are in a breakout room, which is in the new tab. The students are still in the main room. They can come back to the previous tab in their browser, ask a question to the instructor, and the instructor can also listen into any breakout room. They'll appear as a user in the chat, or the instructor can fully join the breakout room to help the students out. So getting them to breakout rooms, having the instructor give visibility, and bringing the students back, it's all there. Accessibility is important, so we added live closed captioning as well. There's, there's, this is the ability for a stenographer, somebody with maybe a stenograph machine to do live captioning. So there's a layout called captioning. When you go there as a moderator, you have the ability to pick a language and then you can start typing uh, text into it. So uh, when you're a moderator, you can take ownership of it, which means you're gonna be the one who types into the, let's say the English language stream or the Portuguese language stream. And other students viewing that, will actually be able to see uh, what you type in. And when they go to uh, closed captioning layout, anyone who wants to follow the captioning will see the active languages and then they'll be able to uh, follow it as well. So there's what the instructor's touching, or it's the sonographer is typing into the class. So it's there when people need it. And the, ca the captions appear uh, in the recordings as subtitles. The other thing we're working on is the ability to add subtitles after a recording is done probably will happen through an API call. And that gives you both sides of the closed captioning, the live and after the fact. Other things we did in 1.1, we increased the speed of desktop sharing, works across all browsers. It does this by launching a Java network launch protocol file. So the instructor and only the instructor needs to have Java, and then they will be able to present their desktop to students. It's actually faster than the previous version of desktop sharing, it captures the cursor, uh, so it's a higher quality desktop experience for students. We also created a simple front end as well, called it Greenlight, and that you'll see this on our demo server. If anybody goes to demo.bigbluebutton.org, you can type in the name of a meeting, uh, you'll get an invite URL, you can log in, and other people have that invite URL can join. You can also join the meeting through your Google or your uh, Twitter account, and then you will have the ability to have meetings with recordings and manage those recordings as well. So this is uh, called Greenlight. It's on our GitHub repo. You'll see it on our demo server if you go there. Other updates, we improved the speed of processing of recordings in Big Blue Button. So there's kind of like a staged area where instead of having all the recordings that are uploaded processed first before they publish, the processing phase might take a long time if there's lots of recordings being submitted. Uh, now, as soon as a recording is finished processing, there's also a thread that's monitoring to see if there's any recordings that are processed and been published. So it's kind of going things in parallel right now. Uh, the, main, the main key was that we didn't want to kind of bottleneck on the processing phase if there was lots of things there. And we've added some logging for the client as well so that there's uh, debug logs that are going to the server, it helps with uh, testing the client, and all this information is available at our doc site. Okay, so roadmap ahead for 2017. 
So this is kind of a summary slide. The, I won't talk about the HTML5 client or the iOS client in detail because that's there are going to be presentations that follow after this. But in terms of the core Big Blue Button server, there are things that we're adding to the core that uh, will benefit all clients uh, going forward. One is the ability to have multiple presentations. So you could actually have two presentations side by side. Uh, shared notes so that people can collaborate together on notes. This is going to be really interesting for the breakout rooms. So we want to make it possible for students to collaborate in breakout rooms, and that collaboration can be perhaps brought back into the main room. Um, Multi-user whiteboard. Again, the pedagogic use case is that instructor is tutoring students, and let's say they're working on a math problem together and wants to give the students the ability to draw or to work on the math problem at the same time as the instructor. Again, getting them involved kinetically is another way to improve learning. And we're also looking at ways we can use WebRTC for desktop sharing. Firefox and Chrome, the capability is built in and be able to send the video stream uh, as a desktop sharing to the server and see it appear in the HTML5 clients and the Flash client. There's a couple other features that uh, uh, we're uh, working on getting in. And I want to give a shout out to MCONF. They have a, they've had a fork of Big Blue Button for quite a while. And they've been building on top of our core and adding features. And some of those features get back into Big Blue Button. We've made a real effort for the 2.0 release to kind of unify that effort. That effort. So we're uh, with the solid core that we have in 1.1 and the features that MCONF have provided on their branch, kind of merge them together and make them 2.0. So this is where you're going to see the development pace for Big Blue Button in even increase further in the future. So the full screen mode, desktop sharing within presentation. So it's not a separate screen. It's going to there'll be a tabbed interface for the presenter. Uh, cut, copy, and clear the chat. Uh, some buttons there for it. Download the presentations. And with the newer get stats for ORTC, we can actually surface some of those stats inside the client. And this will give people a feedback on what the audio uh, quality might be. So in the cases where you're talking, you don't hear yourself talking. But if, you're, uh, if there's some feedback in the client that a lot of packets are getting dropped, sent to the server, you're not waiting for students to say, hey, I'm, your audio is not coming through so clearly, uh, we can give you some feedback right away to let you know there's some might be some issues with the network. In terms of the HTML5 client, uh, this is all in the docs, but just to summarize, we're certainly doing this uh, in phases because we want to get something out earlier than later. The first phase is sort of focusing on the needs of the student, which will mean all the student capabilities, minus the two-way video, because there's more work to be done on that area. Um, but we want to be able to make sure the student sees the instructor's presentation, desktop sharing, um, be able to do the all the all the collaborative stuff, breakout rooms, whiteboard or uh, see the whiteboard, do the chat, respond to polls, uh, do the emoji icons, and see the closed captioning as well. So really looking at if a student is not able to access a class, the live class on the desktop, they would be able to uh, whip open their uh, mobile device or Android device and be able to participate. And I I say Android because the uh, unfortunately, Apple doesn't allow uh, users to install browsers that support WebRTC. They want people to write an app, which we are also working on as well. But the HTML5 client will get a good chunk of the market for the Android, and we're also working on an iOS client as well. And you'll see more about that in the later presentations today. And then as once we release that, we'll be working on the uh, adding the moderator presenter capabilities to the HTML5 client as well. And I think as you, you can... I know a lot of people have been interested in the HTML5 client. Again, kind of reflecting that philosophy of making sure the base is really strong. Uh, we'll have something that you can try out shortly, and you'll be able to give feedback on it. And we're hoping you're going to get a good experience with it. So summary, we focus on one market, online learning. As an open source project, we can see the ecosystem growing. And we want to do the right things in the project in terms of documentation, focus on the core, stability, keep our eye on the target market, Think about the pedagogic uh, challenges that an instructor may have and what can we do to lower those challenges and make sure the students have a really good experience when they're learning and just support other people as they want to build on top of the glue button. And there are the links in the project. At this point, I'd be more than happy to answer questions from folks. Type it in the chat. Uh, I wanted to leave a, a space where you can ask anything you wanted. And there'll be more updates this summer as we roll through uh, the development. But any questions, feel free to type it in. So uh, it's a good question, Oliver. Are we planning to stick with Ubuntu 16.04 for 2.0? Uh, 
even the release date should end up after April 2018. So if you look at the last release, uh, so 1.1 1 .1, uh, took about six months of development, and then we did it uh, six months of testing. It actually was deployed. A lot of people deployed it on production uh, six months ago. And then the last months, we've just been fixing everything we could possibly find. Um, so what it probably means is that the release date of BigBlueButton 2.0 will probably be before April 2018, which means it will be on 1604. And it will be going through its testing cycle. But uh, the, the releases of Ubuntu are not getting as big as gaps as the previous releases. Well, the big thing for this release in 1.1 was the use of systemd for uh, simplifying the startup scripts. So uh, a lot of work's been going into the packaging to make sure it's really solid and the instructions and people have a good experience when they install BigBlueButton. It shouldn't be hard for us to go to 18.04. So I don't think it's going to be a big issue. And when the, uh, when the time comes for us to move, you'll see us and they move pretty quickly. So there could be a 2.1, which runs on uh, 1804 when the long-term release goes out. Other questions? It's funny in the past presentations that I've done, there's always like, when's breakout rooms coming or when is this feature or that feature? And as we get more of the core features in place, we see, you know, Big blue button doing not 80% of what people want, like 90, 95%. There's still good stuff ahead. Um, but it's looking like it's looking good in terms of just making sure we're focused on that core collaborative uh, capabilities and giving people a platform on which they can build upon. So I'll just wait for a few more moments if there are any other questions. And no worries if not, guys, you always can ask on the forum. Uh, so Van Dung, so uh, if you're getting disconnected, uh, it is likely networking issues. Yeah, it's, uh, I've seen you, uh, other people in the session here have been connected and remain connected. This is the challenge of doing online collaboration is that uh, the first thought is maybe the client is not performing correctly. In almost all cases, when students are getting disconnected, uh, it's usually their internet. It's just not, the client is unable to convince itself that it's still connected. So it it will automatically reconnect on you. And if the internet connection drop was inter, was very intermediate, then it should be able to connect back. Um, and this is very similar to other applications. You know, The gold standard is Skype. And I'm sure if anyone's used Skype, you'll see there's times when Skype will say, hang on, reconnecting. So we did add the reconnection logic so that if the, the internet drop for a few minutes, the users would be able to, re the client would automatically reconnect on their behalf. Um, I think you'll find if you go to a different network location or try out different internet, you might be a bit more stable. And you can always try it anytime on our demo server as well. Okay. Other questions? Okay, I think we're good. All right, I'm gonna stop the recording and thanks all for joining us.